Good evening, everybody. It is a pleasure for me to present you Hermann Hesberger, especially in this room, in the core of the last masterpiece of Victor Horta. And as we saw, as Hesberger will show, he, he was always interested in Horta. And he is perhaps one of the only architects of his generation who really incorporated certain aspects of the work of Horta. Uh, of course, not a decoration, but in a structural way. As you know, uh, he is generally considered as a major representative of the so-called structuralism, the Dutch structuralism, which is an architecture movement which blossomed in the Netherlands in the 60s and in the 70s. Uh, you received uh, this booklet and I had an interview with him which was also pu published in A+. And those who have read it in A+, uh, have seen, I just uh, had a, a discussion with him on the, no the very notion of structuralism. What does it mean, structuralism in architecture? And how is it related to structuralism in the social sciences? Uh, Levi Strauss and others. Um, Perhaps, I suppose, he will extend on that and will tell something more on it. Um, as you probably know, but you have not visited this, his major work, his major building, generally considered uh, in the actual history, for instance, in Kenneth Frampton, uh, his major work is the Central Beheer building in Apeldoorn. It was an office building made for the local insurance company. And the pe peculiar thing about Central Beheer is that it's not an office in the usual sense. It's not a series of closed rooms with a corridor. It is neither a landscape office where everything is floating in space. No, it's a, a building conceived as a little city. A little city composed of small elements, space cells, which are open, which are crossed by streets. And uh, what is special, it's... It is an interpretable inter uh, structure, a structure interpretable. The notions of, inter of interpretation in architecture, I think uh, Hesberger invented it in the 60s. And that's perhaps because he is a, a good uh, pianist who is a musician, and it has to do with the notion that in music you have, you, you play, in classical music you have a partition which you play, you, you are not allowed to change the notes, but you interpret it, and so you make, you make a, a personal thing of it. Each pianist will uh, play a sonata by Mozart of Be or Beethoven, in his own way and in a different sense. Uh, with a little like exaggeration, you could say that every pianist plays his own sonata and you, you hear another one. That's why we, we buy so much interpretations of it. Well, the, 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 the idea of Herzberger, which is very original, is to applying this to architecture, which he, in my opinion, really succeeded to do in Central Beheer and in a few other buildings. I will not say more about this, just return, return uh, 
to Horta. Uh, I first met Herzberger in 1968, and he was in Brussels with a group of Delft students to visit the work of Victor Horta. And I came across him, and he was before the Hotel Solvay, and he was telling things, reading the building in a way that I had never heard before. It was really an, an architecture, ar architect's reading of this architecture, not of the decoration, but of the structure and how the elements of building interpenetrate and what, how they have a relationship, the one with the other. So, I am glad to give the floor to Herzberger in the last great masterpiece of Horta in the very core of it. Please, Herman, the floor is for you. What can I say after all this? I mean, he is, he, you, you were having the talk, huh? not me, yeah, about Hotta. I cannot, I cannot come to Brussels without thinking of Hotta. And um, therefore I start to show you something of Hotta in the what is the Hotel Solvé, which from a long time ago was really intriguing me. That what he is doing is uh, starting downstairs with very large stairs, and the more you come up, the smaller the stairs uh, is going to be, which is, uh, which is logic, sort of logic, because uh, the big crowd, you know, when you have a party and so on, they come in from the ground floor and there you need a large stairs. And when you're coming up, it's more for the sleeping rooms and for the for the surface, and so then you need a small stairs. That's a, a sort of a sort of a sort of functionalism, you could say. Huh? Uh, but the interesting thing, and this this is the point, is uh, well here you see what I what I was trying to say. You start large to the first floor where you have the main rooms, the main, uh, uh, where they receive the, the, the important people, and then you go, go up and you get a reasonable stairs, and then the more you come high up, the smaller the stairs becomes. But at the same time, the light well in the middle, upstairs, you know, and on top you have the the roof light, the, the skylight. I think this is really this is really architecture. That you bring the light in from above, you know, uh, and that this is combined with the idea that you don't what you need in terms of, of, of stairs. So Hotta is always and I think that uh, Francis Straufe was also mentioning this always for his embellishment, for his decoration and things. But he, in my opinion, he was really a space architect. And it is space what it is all about in, in architecture. And, um, you know, we know this, this lamp is in the same hall. Uh, what I think 
incredibly good is not the fact that it's swinging. It's nice that it's swinging. It's better, better that it's really like a plant, you know, uh, showing uh, an idea of uh, energy and uh, uh, erotics, if you like, you know, really more than just the stiff stuff that architects usually make. But the interesting thing is, is um, that he shows the electricity uh, ducts and also the gas ducts explicitly. I mean, we have the electricity in the, in the wall. We don't see it, it's somewhere hidden and we believe, okay, it works. And when it doesn't work, then we say, well, it doesn't work. Uh, where's my internet connection? Huh? Uh, but uh, to show it explicitly is, is very in interesting and very modern, you know. So, of course, uh, Horta was famous uh, as an Art Nouveau architect, but, I mean, by the way, this is also Horta, and we all neglected this because it was without all this decoration, uh, but it's a very late uh, Horta, and in the books it's always written, yeah, you know, he was, at that moment, he, he lost the way, but it's not true. I mean, I have to confess to you that this is the first time that I am in this building, and I can see that this, uh, this should be analyzed in terms of, uh, of space and not in terms of, oh, he, he's using classical things, mm. degradation, huh? that he uses classical elements. But don't look at the decoration, uh, look at, at the space, you know. This was just a sort of introduction uh, for, for being in Brussels. I am now talking about the building of Centraal Beheer. Francis Trauven was also mentioning. Uh, this is, you know, a building which was very important for me um, uh, in 19... Uh, 68 until 72 it was made and my idea was not to make one building but rather a sort of city uh, you know I tried to to mix up the idea of city and the idea of building for me a good building uh, basically is a city and uh, I'm not saying a, a good city uh, is like a building. I mean, Aldo van Eyck was saying that was Francis, uh, but uh, uh, I think this is not symmetrical. Um, um, a good building uh, should be uh, like a city, and the idea was to articulate the whole program into um, elements, into space elements uh, um, in, a, in, a, in a very space, uh, in a, uh, you know, in space, like um, uh, nine to nine uh, square meters, uh, where you have four places where you can uh, uh, sit, but it's not only um, an office building, but you could also make it into a sort of um, a school, if you like, or, uh, you know, it is not the idea of an, an office building should be made uh, precisely for office. One day the office will, will be gone. I, we were passing all these buildings here from the, in, in Brussels, from the uh, European community. Oh my God, 
don't think of the idea that the European com community uh, would, would fall down, because what would, would happen with all these buildings? Hmm? Uh, and and uh, Central Beheer is now abandoned, and um, we are now, I am now at this, this moment, this very moment, uh, busy to think about what could be done with that building. And there's one thing which is always topical, which is always necessary, and that's housing. So I say every building should be made in such a way that you can transform it into housing. That for me is a criteria for a good moral, not a, not a theater like this. I mean, this is, of course, but, but you know, an office building or any, or, um, any other building uh, should be uh, sooner or later uh, uh, prepared for, for housing. And um, these pictures I'm showing you now are from the past. And here you see the idea that this space units can be used for different ways, in different ways. I mean, this is just uh, three examples, but um, why not also make that into housing at a certain moment. This, this is the moment that I, I saw the light. I saw, uh, you know, it, it, it came, uh, um, I, I don't know who did it. Was it God or was it just uh, an accident that uh, these two pictures came together on my table. And you see, it's the same amphitheater. And in some circumstances in the Middle Ages, it was used as a walled town. And in another situation, exactly the same thing, because it's a sort of uh, prefabricated idea. And the Romans made these amphitheaters everywhere uh, in more or less the same way, uh, like uh, prefabrication. And you see that in different situations, in different times, at different times, uh, the, the same form, the same uh, thing, could become something completely different. And this, for me, is a criteria for architecture, that what we make... Uh, uh, it could be transformed, you know, and not just specific for this or for that, but it's a, a sort of uh, universal uh, idea of making what we make uh, such that it, uh, that it uh, after some time, when everything is changing, except maybe a theater, uh, and that it can be changed, transformed into something else. Here you see the, the, the plan, one of the plans of this building. Um, and what we do now, what we try to do now, is to transform it into housing. We keep the, the main streets with the skylights, and we uh, make these elements into different housing types. Uh, I think this is the ultimate, the ultimate dream I had when I started to, to make this building. I mean, an office building, after all, is not so interesting. You know, offices. Hmm? Uh, that's not all there is, you know. And for me, I hope that um, I'm able to, uh, to still be present when we make this into a city, a city with houses. And you see what we did, and that's of course terrible, 
is take out three towers. But the fact that you can do that, the fact that you can, you can take out just uh, uh, one, two, three of these towers, uh, you're not destroying the whole building. I mean, what you do is uh, 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 making light so that you can make more, more housing. <clears throat> this, is, this sort of transformation is what interests me. And you may call it structuralism, or you may forget about that, that word, but the idea of structuralism is that there is something which remains a sort of uh, structure. Uh, and Francis Straufen um, uh, was uh, uh, proposing me to not call it structuralism, but just call it structure. A structure which can be interpreted in different ways, can be changed uh, into something else. And maybe if, if they ever want to have office buildings, you can make it ultimately uh, into an office building. Uh, and here you see just a detail of the housing types we are um, trying to design. And this is just very fresh. It's not yet the, the final ID, but uh, so far I think it works. And then we have this sort of um, pictures to sell the ID, because the, every ID has to be sold. And then you must have this sort of slicky pictures to show people, look how, how beautiful you can, you can live in this, um, in this building. And I said just for, the, for selling purposes, uh, uh, take away the concrete and clad it with, with wood because people uh, prefer wood. I mean, I don't care as long as the, the concrete is still there behind it. You can always get away the, the wood or make something else. Uh, the structure is there and the cladding, the, the interpretation, the decoration, uh, the infill uh, is uh, is uh, a temporary thing, you know. It will come and it will go and it will change and different people will do uh, different, different things. I mean, this is a terrible picture, but it's, it, is, it is quite nice to see how this uh, serious office building can be made into this sort of apartments. If you want one, you just let me know, then I can make an inscription for you, yeah? This is how the building has been, and you see uh, the, uh, the idea, the feeling of, of city. And this is what, what I try to keep in it, and to even reinforce the idea that in between you walk uh, in a city, you have coffee bars, you have places where you can, uh, can meet people and you can uh, uh, make a self-cook uh, or a cooking together kitchen. You can make a library, you can make what you want. And you, what we try to do, and this is the work I'm doing at this moment, is to to, to, to find means to, to make this into a real uh, city. This is how it looked before, no, how it still looks now, and this is what it is going to be. But we are, of course, we have the, the, the condition of sustainability. Every building today has to be sustainable you have to keep the energy in and, uh, and, and, uh, and the heat and the, and the 
cold outside. And what we are doing, in fact, is making a sort of raincoat, or maybe, if you like, a, a snow coat around the building. And you can peel it off, if you like, and then you find the old building, uh, you find it back. The idea is to envelop it with an, an, uh, another, another skin. And we are trying to detail, make the details of this. And um, if, if everything is going okay, uh, this is going, uh, is going to happen. And of course, there are people who say, oh, what a pity, we, we love this old building. And, um, well, I also love the old building. I also loved uh, my, myself when I was young, but, I'm not, but I change, everything changes. And, um, and you must accept the change, the idea that an, a building, I mean, a, a, a painting in, the, in, in, in a museum will stay what it was. Uh, maybe a little bit of craquelé, but then there come people to restore it, you know, precisely. But a building is subject of change. Every building. Forget the idea that you are able to make a building which remains as it, as it is. It is a, a, a subject of change. And this is what I, uh, on my age, uh, I learned, you, you, you have to, to become old to learn that, that idea, that everything you make will be changed. And you have to make it in such a way that it will be better after, after the transformation. So, and this is what, oh, you know, it is uh, an advantage that it's a, a very large, uh, 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 a project not high and, and, and small, but it's a very uh, large surface, so you can make sun uh, elements uh, uh, on, the, on the roofs. We can make these terraces that were actually, when it was an office building, a sort of poor, poor environment. We can uh, activate the terraces. So, I'm convinced that it's going to be a better building. Now, uh, this, is, this is a discussion I, I have with, with uh, Francis Straufen. Um, this is the, the idea of grid iron. And you must realize that this project is also um, uh, based on the idea of grid iron, you know, all the streets are in two directions um, uh, forming, forming a grid. And what, what it is, the grid iron in the, in the city planning, is a sort of minimal um, control, a minimal um, measure of, of, of keeping things on, in, 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 uh, in control. And in New York, for instance, all these blocks are different. Everybody is doing in his block what he wants, you know, different colors, different height, different types of, of, of buildings. But the whole thing is kept under control by this sort of, you may call it stupid idea of just this grid iron. And um, this is in the discussion that, um, uh, well, Aldo van Eyck was my father of architecture. He learned me uh, as a father, you know, with all the advantages and the disadvantages about um, arch architecture. And his um, uh, most brilliant student was Piet Blom, who made 
for instance, this project, a city for, I think, a million uh, people, and it was based on a very clever, very brilliant idea of uh, how to, uh, a sort of network of order, which made the, kept the whole thing in order. The point is, the, 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 the question is, how much freedom there is in this scheme, because every uh, investor, every, everybody who is uh, taking part in um, making, making the city uh, has his own ideas and want to have his own freedom. So the discussion is how much freedom and how much control you must have. There must be a sort of uh, balance of control and freedom. And um, I have my doubts about the freedom in this project. I mean, it's brilliant. How can you invent such a thing? It's a piece of, of art, this. It belongs to the wall of a museum, this model. But um, it was discussed in um, a Team 10 meeting in, I think, 62, uh, I'm not quite sure, 62 or 63, in uh, Royaumont, north of Paris. And then this discussion was going on. Uh, is this uh, possible to be a city planner and make this in, in this way and still keep the freedom? You could, you could say, yeah, there is a lot of freedom in it. You could interpret such a thing in your own way. However, it's going to be higher up here, so the people who want high buildings, say the uh, Communauté uh, Européenne, they would be here in the middle, and um, uh, the others with less money and so on would be um, downstairs in the, in the country. Uh, but um, is this going to work? That was the discussion. And uh, Pete Blom, who uh, heard about this discussion, um, took the model and threw it uh, three floors down in the light well of the... He, he wanted to destroy it because he himself had the idea that he might have been um, wrong with it. I made earlier, when we were um, in the, the Forum magazine, uh, I was in the editorial staff, I made a model of matchboxes to show uh, all sorts of things that we could... Um, the basic thing was to, to show that you can make a better city than just like, like this. And then Aldo van Eyck told me, yeah, this is chaotic. We shouldn't promote this too chaotic idea because, in fact, this model is saying um, you, um, you can do what you want, and um, it, it, it ends up in a, in a chaotic city. Uh, and then, to please Aldo, I made this model, which is quite near to the Piet Blom thing, um, uh, which, which has this strong structure. What I want to tell you, I'm not, I, I cannot say what is right and what is wrong. What I want to, to tell you is that we must find a balance between order and uh, freedom, uh, in this case, freedom of interpretation uh, by the people. And this is a theme which is true uh, in, uh, I'm convinced, in all architecture. I jump from one thing uh, to another. Um, this is the big auditorium 
of the music musical center in Utrecht. And um, this is a, a, a new photograph because it's restored. And it's just uh, um, th this way, uh, like the photograph is today. And, uh, sorry. And what happened is that uh, they wanted to to um, to uh, increase the possibilities and making a larger center and um, this at the at the left side you see the building the way it has been and at the right side you s you see what was demolished and what was left. So the old big auditorium uh, in here was is just uh, preserved. And um, also here um, we are talking about transformation. What happened is that they wanted that the, the, the pop music hall would be part of this, uh, this building and they wanted a crossover, a crossover um, auditorium. Uh, they wanted a jazz auditorium, they wanted a, uh, a chamber music hall and all this to be added to the building. And basically, they destroyed the old building, but um, we were asked as supervisor of the whole thing, and I and there was there was no no place. We had to put it all together, very compact, uh, on top of each other. And my idea was to make a sort of um, how do you call it, sort of tent something which can uh, keep the whole thing together. And here you see uh, the way this old auditorium was uh, respected and the pop hall, the jazz hall and the chamber music hall were all piled up like a big... Uh, uh, a big uh, pile of junk uh, all together with uh, something to keep it together. And um, again, I'm coming with the idea of a city. You know, it became a city and uh, of course the aesthetic, if you like uh, to say aesthetic, of the old building um, is lost, but we got something something new in place with a, a completely new building, and people are keep telling me that it's not so nice and that it's uh, uh, a little bit à la mode. But um, I think it is like a city, and you have to accept. Um, that that life uh, uh, goes on and, and changes everything, culture has changed. And I think it is an enormous, um, enormous uh, thing that all these different um, music uh, types are now together and are able to, to uh, fertilize uh, each other. And you get spaces that are really, uh, really nice, I think. Uh, and, and I made, personally, this chamber music hall, and I made it like a, a child of the, of the, big, uh, the big hall. And um, with God's help, 
the acoustics are, are quite good there, which is the most important thing of, of such, a, such a hall. So, uh, my story up to now was uh, actually don't see the building as a piece of art. Uh, it stands there, and you make photographs of it. It is a, a, a living thing that changes. Uh, parts are going to be destroyed. Parts are going to be uh, uh, better than they were before. And uh, th this, is how, uh, this is how I see architecture. Another funny thing is this is supposed to be the sketch for a school. We were, making, we were asked to make a school and the people who were living opposite they complained that they were promised to have a park there and they didn't want a school, but they wanted a park because it was told them that they bought their houses with the idea that they would, that they would see a park. So I made the building in such a way that the, the people that are living here, they see a park instead of a school, you know? And um, a park with a hill, well, could be a nice park. Hmm? And uh, they were accepting this, but f for me, it was an, an opportunity to make an, a, a school in a different way, you know? You see a, a big uh, hall here, and the, 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 the classrooms uh, to one side and, um, and skylight, always skylight. Skylight is the best light you can have in, in, in buildings. And I think I know why. Because skylight makes it city-like, gives the association of city, because in a city always the light comes from from upstairs. So buildings that just have uh, windows. Um, yeah. I always try to make the communal space, the space that binds it all together with uh, a skylight. That, that really works. And here you see the, the classrooms and I, I mean, we made more than, than 30 schools. I had to, to select uh, one or two to show. Otherwise, it would be a lecture on schools. Uh, and I'm not going to show you 30 schools. Uh, but what is interesting in these schools, apart from the fact that it is a park, uh, uh, and it's, it's a hollow in the park, is that what you see here is that the the, the classrooms are, are, not, are, are not respected anymore, that people come out and uh, enlarge the classrooms, because the classrooms are always too small, and the people uh, can work outside, which gives a new type of school, you know? All, so many ages, a school always has been classrooms and corridors. Yeah? And the corridors are for the coats. Yeah? And when the bell rings, they all stumble outside and try to get their coat. And therefore, you have to make uh, uh, very large corridors because otherwise people would get stuck in them. And it takes a lot of square meters, and every square meter costs money. So what we did here is make no corridors, but use every square meter for, for educational purposes. So what I propose is to use as many square meters in a school for... Um, for educational purposes. And this idea, this old idea in the classroom where there's the blackboard and there's the teacher who tells 
the, the children, how the world works, is, is just outdated. Today, people are working with their, with their laptops, they're working on projects, they're working more individual, and this gives a complete new type of school after, after the, the school as a, as a forgotten type in the modernity, the, the hardly any, any good modern school. So um, I spend a lot of time to try to, to make better schools. And here you see, uh, which is, so to say, the direct uh, consequence of this section I showed you, that the, that the people have this sort of grandstand where everything, uh, uh, everything they do together um, happens. So it's one open, oh, uh, actually it's a section, it's a section that, that works. In uh, Rome, in uh, Roma, in Italy, we built a school um, which, uh, in which I try to be economic um, in terms of means. I'm proposing economy of means and, and um, a sort of consistence of, uh, of elements to try to be very elementary, simple in terms of, of your construction elements. It makes it cheaper and uh, uh, tell one story. Most architects are telling, I don't know how many stories in one, one building. Be consistent and have one theme and work that through the whole, through the whole building, you know? A sort of economy of, uh, of means and uh, a sort of consistency of, of means. So this is an, uh, an example of this sort of design. Everything with the same uh, technical elements um, floors, beams, um, columns, um, and try to, to make that into a pattern that works, in this case, with all these inner cords. And this, the, the whole school is, so to say, embedded in the, in the ground. M many architects, and, and especially Classical architects always want to put their, their building on a, on a sort of uh, uh, high, high up, on a sort of, uh, uh, how do you say, piedestal, what is the word, uh, you know? Um, and um, I, th I think in this, in this case, it is much better to have, because here you have the... Uh, steps down, keep the whole thing together in a sort of containing, containing, uh, uh, containing plot. Uh, and um, you see what, what comes out. Uh, you see this, the, the steps give the, 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 the means for the people to, to keep every, everything together, you know? This not extravert looking down, uh, uh, but uh, in a sort of, um, in a sort of, um, how do you say that? Uh, kept in the, in the ground and, um, uh, introspective instead of extravert, you know, huh? introvert. And here you see how it works. Underneath you have 
you, uh, you know, in this climate of Rome, you have much more emphasis on the outside, but people in, in, uh, in Italy were not used to use the external space, uh, but I learned them how to do that. And uh, with a great reluctance, they started to, to also work outside in the inner court, you know? Um, which is, uh, I think, uh, uh, um, a lot of freedom added to the old system. And here you see the spine, the spine in the middle, the connecting main street that connects all the inner courts and all the, the aisles of the different parts of the school. And this is going to be really the main street, the way it is, uh, it is used. The other school we made um, in Amsterdam um, was for secondary uh, education. And uh, we are now asked to extend it, so also this form will not remain the same. But the interesting thing of this school is that we made it split leveled and with a big uh, void, light well in the, in the middle, so that you have not a building with all slices. Most buildings, most architects are making are sliced. You have uh, floors, and the floor is completely independent of, of the other floors. It is it's just sliced in, in pieces. So what I always try to do is to make uh, the building as one main space. And of course you need doors, of course you need all sorts of, uh, of uh, rooms, but try to keep everything together uh, with one main space. You see that in all my buildings and of course with, with skylight, you know? And here we have uh, stairs from one half floor to the other half floor, and this is where the boys are, are just uh, controlling where are the nice girls, and the girls are controlling where are the, the, the good boys, and this is the most important thing in, an, in, a, in a secondary school. It's not mathematics or language, but it's um, to see each other and to keep each other under control. And this is happening in this big main uh, space. And instead of making a stairs like whoop, 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 always the same, I make stairs more wild, more, you know, instead of the, instead of what is the, the result of an, a normal stairs is that you don't see each other. You walk on the stairs, you say, hey, oh, hello, and then you go on, you know. And you, when you make stairs in such a way that you have always a look, you go, oh, hmm, hmm, huh? that you, <laughs> That you, you know, that's, uh, no, but this is important. This is architecture, I think. Huh? And um, so we made the stairs in such a way that you, that you keep an eye on all the nice people around and that you make a space which socializes, which has the possibility to socialize. My, Architecture is always based on the idea to keep people uh, uh, in contact with each other, to have exchange, possibility of exchange. We were in the car, we were discussing the fact uh, whether the mobile phones 
do the same thing. You have enormous uh, uh, data, uh, you have enormous contact with everybody, but you don't see how people react. I mean, it's always written, it's always, you know, and I'm uh, too old for Facebook and for Twitter. I, 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 don't want, I, I don't want to know that somebody is uh, just taking a shower or taking a, uh, or, or just uh, left uh, the, the table and uh, uh, is, is, is looking in. That, that's not, for me, it's not interesting. It's more interesting for me to see somebody when I say something, what's the reaction? What's going to happen? Huh? Uh, is it working, what I was saying? Huh? And, and, and that I can uh, um, see people and say, uh, what's, what's wrong with you? There's something, must be something wrong. No, 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 there's nothing. No, don't tell me, you know, that you, you have to contact. And I think the work of an architect is to use space for that. To make, to, to, I think space is, uh, in fact, the medium for, for interrelation, exchange, uh, meeting each other, if you like. If it is really uh, going okay, then it's meeting. Uh, um, and, and I try to make the building in such a way that this is, that this is uh, possible. Everywhere I make, I put myself in the place, that they say when I'm standing there, I can see who is coming up and who is going down. And um, this is for me the, the grammar of, uh, of, of, of architecture. This is another building we made, a technical building in, for the university in Eindhoven. And uh, what you don't see, I mean, it, it looks like a, a, a normal building, but it's not as normal as you think it is. Because everywhere in, in between floors, there are uh, uh, voids, open spaces. So everywhere, all, this, all this, uh, these floors are connected with each other. But what I want to show you is this part, which is the center, the heart, of the, of the building. And there we made an, a staircase. I mean, this is, this is my specialty, because I think staircases with landings, the landings of the staircases are very important. And there you can see through all the floors, you know, the internal uh, connection, uh, and you see each other, and it gives you the feeling that it is that it is one whole and no slices. So please, no slices, no floors. Don't make buildings with just floors and staircases the way the fire department is asking you. Of course, we have to also to to um, satisfy the fire department. So we make somewhere in dark corners. We make stupid, uh, simple. Uh, stairs as, as cheap as, as possible, and, uh, and, the, and, the, and the money we have, we spend in this sort of things. I mean, I started to make these holes because it was too heavy. It was very thick metal, and they said, yeah, you must uh, lose some kilograms. And I made these uh, windows, and the windows are marvelous. They're the best of the whole thing because you all of a sudden you see a girl, you know, fantastic. <laughs> and this is the effect of the thing. This is my, uh, uh, the way I try to, to make space and to use space uh, in order to, to give the feeling that you are part of an well, if you, like, if you like to say a community, it's not really a community like in the church, you know, where they're all praying in the same direction, but it's a sort of uh, feeling that, that, that you are not alone, that there are more people. You have the same 
ID also in some old libraries where you are all sitting. And, and I, today we have all these coffee corners where people are sitting and working with the laptops. Uh, it's better than on, on, in your private room. You sit together, it costs you one coffee, you know, okay, it's not too expensive. And you sit the whole uh, afternoon and you meet people. And this is the sort of make everything uh, the, 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 the living room of a building. So don't make any building without without a, a big living room where everybody sees each other. And, and there are also places you can't see it on this picture. It's a wrong picture. Uh, where, where the people here, sorry, where the people are working. So there are all places where they're working and looking down in the, on the stairs. This is a very old, old, uh, picture. It was uh, the Montessori school I made somewhere in the 1965 or something. And I had at that time the idea to make in the, in the big hall, to make, a, a, say, a, a block, just an, uh, you know, an, uh, a fixed a fixed block, and they were all saying yes, but it's always standing in the way. Can we, can't we make it uh, as a piece of furniture that we could take it away? And I was convinced that it should not be taken away, that it just should be there. And it turns out in the, in the, in the life of the school that people try to find that block uh, and see it as an, as an island in the sea. And they come together and they work there because they feel uh, a sort of uh, uh, stability in this uh, small children, stability, a uh, point of stability in this, uh, in this big space which is, uh, which is maybe uh, too open. That, that, um, that was for me an important lesson. You, you learn the most of your own things, your own mistakes, and your own experiments. And um, it's important to, to, to look back to what you did. And then I made, um, as a sort of counterpoint, a, a hole in the floor, and it turned out to have um, almost the same effect, not quite the same effect, because here the people are looking inward to the center, to something which is happening, whereas in the previous one, they are looking more outward, you know. It's an old scheme that also Aldo van Eyck already mentioned. Uh, I told you before that he was my architecture father. I mean, he was sort of uh, opening up uh, my, my, my brain. And um, unintentionally, you get this in your brain, and it in one or the other way comes out in your, in your work. And I made sense Bits. I found out that many people, um, when they are small and uh, that they, they have the feeling that they, they need some protection. So I made a lot of very small sand pits instead of that one where always some aggressive boys are coming and, you know, destroying your your things, so that it works better when you have compartments. So I made compartments. Actually, this is back to the idea of articulation. Huh? Not making things too large, but articulate things in such a way that they are better 
uh, equipped for, for the feeling, for the emotional uh, uh, state of uh, people. Well, this is the same thing in New York City, but a little larger. I mean, uh, it has everything to do with the number of people uh, you have. This is also looking inward, and it's an, an ice rink, and in the summer it's a terrace in Rockefeller Center, and it gives you the protection uh, you need to, to be enveloped, to be uh, protected, to be sort of uh, feeling uh, that you have the space under control. This is what I also experimented with larger places in other schools, and they, 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 they work, they all work in their way. Here they make projects with people, and you see that they feel better by having some sort of something to, to lean, something, well, I only can find the word protection. Yeah? Feel protected at the one hand and have the view the, uh, to look out. Keep all the others um, in the eye and be protected yourself. That's the two main conditions of people in, in space. It's a sort of paradox to be protected and to, be, and to have a view. Huh? Uh, but this, this, these two conditions should always be there. And you see it also in the large scale, like in the Piazza San Pietro in, in Roma, where this whole bunch of people comes together, feeling enveloped uh, and protected by this beautiful uh, Bernini uh, colonnade, which is a, I, I could uh, also talk for an hour on the Bernini uh, colonnade, uh, colonnade, but I just show this as an, the idea of, of being protected. And this form of, of round or square, which keeps people together, you know, this is what we have to do. Keeping people together is, is a theme that is in all, in all my work and, and always in my, my brain when I see other work is always present. This is uh, the smallest uh, version of it, a small hand wash uh, basin is also for your hands the feeling, you know, of, uh, well, being uh, served by, by the surrounding. This is, this is, by the way, is made by an, uh, uh, because it's quite, quite uh, uh, um, uh, expensive to make uh, the, the mold for this thing, but we had a hard hat, um, and, uh, and a bow helm, helmet, you know, and put it in as the mold of, uh, of the thing. And then it's, all, then it's all of a sudden very, very inexpensive, a very simple thing. You just make, put that hard hat, in it, and you have a small box about it, and you pour the concrete around it, and there you are. And this is what I, I did in the last school I made, you know, that we had this big uh, uh, columns, and I thought we should make some sort of hole in it, uh, and I didn't ask that boy to sit there. They, they find it themselves, you know, it's, it's just, something that happened. I, this was exactly what I had in mind. This is what's going to happen. The only thing you, you have to do is take your thing and make, make a picture of it. Yeah? So what I'm saying is try to 
try whatever you do to make so, uh, in such a way that it ac accommodates people, that it is accommodating, that it is think of people when you are doing things, not in the sense of so many square meters or uh, what the, uh, the building police is asking from you, but think in terms of what would I, what would I do myself when I had, was there? What the hell can I do with a column like this? I mean, sit in it, okay, make some sort of device to, to make that possible. And this is also, uh, you know, when you have an, somewhere an, a, a fence or something, uh, it is not so difficult to make some sort of place where people can hide, where people can, can sit. It's uh, accommodation, you know? Uh, this is what I try to do in all, all my work. And also, why should we make uh, columns without the, the possibility to, when you have a game or you, have, or you don't want to, to join the game or, you know, just have this, the, 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 the contractor did not, um, did not ask money for it. He just did that. Hmm? It's quite, quite simple. And I didn't invent it, but I saw it in the Bernini colonnade. Although I'm not sure that Bernini had in mind that old women would sit on, on his uh, bases. Huh? But his bases are uh, in such a, such a dimension that, I mean, it's fantastic. This is really, um, in spite of itself, it is accommodating, it became accommodating architecture. Who is saying something bad about classicism? Uh, classicism can be uh, quite good. And everywhere in Italy, you see alongside buildings, you see these steps. And it's not only tourists, and it's not only old people, also young people, and everywhere um, they are sitting. And I propose to make um, buildings more touchable, more uh, near, more nearby, more uh, just, uh, uh, yeah, what can I say, uh, just more friendly. And this is actually uh, meant as the very solemn and monumental entrance to the Columbia University in uh, New York. So the idea is that you, that you have to go up, or like this, to the holy books. Um, but it can also be used in the opposite way, just as a place to sit in the sun, and in this case, there was a person who had something very important to tell to the people, and they are all listening, and it's going to be um, a theater. So um, it does not deny monumentality. You can make monumentality and in such a way that it can also be reversed. This is actually my story uh, about uh, architecture, and I, I um, finish with one picture, which is funny, but it's actually, it's the, it's, it's the, uh, you know, I'm asking to architects, listen, uh, of course, without architecture, people try to, to make the conditions they need, but it's a, it's a, it's a weak story for architects. I mean, uh, I mean, in, in fact, this is what we should do 
what we not should leave to the people who park cars and by accident have just the right opening for this. But this is actually saying that we should keep in mind all these situations and should build design and, and build for that and not leave it to the accidents uh, of life. Thank you very much. <laughs>